Hello dear listeners, I've only just put my microphone set up away from our spare room. My wife listeners were badgering me to put that bloody thing away off the desk and literally this morning I'd folded it all up, put it in its, its little box and put it on the shelf thinking that's it, me done for the summertime, dear listeners. No more podcasting till August, but lo and behold, um, breaking news this morning sees the um, unexpected departure shall we say of steve kavanagh chief executive and head of recruitment alex aldrich joining me to chew over this this breaking news it's only literally come out within an hour and a bit since uh, as we record it is the big dog himself it's mr neil fissler welcome to the show neil uh yeah well it's been that long i think people have forgotten who i am nobody can forget who you are fissler you know that uh it's good to have you back Great to um, get your take on the fairly dramatic <laughs> turn of events. It's never quiet. It's a soap opera at the den, and it's never quiet, mate, is it? Maybe that's why we love it. So, Yeah, it's a strange one. But then again, you would have thought that uh, the club, it, you know, it's the end of the season. It's the first week of the end of the season. So it's probably the right time to make changes or to announce changes if you're going to make them i guess these decisions were made or taken a long time ago and it was just a question of when it happened and yeah and how um yeah. dramatic week neil because not only have we got the change um we don't know any have any news yet as to who will be replacing steve kavanagh nor uh, kevin gallon has taken over as director of um recruitment so um that's that that news has come out today well, of course we were sp- who I think was, or I think worked with, uh, uh, didn't he work with uh, us? The QPR, was not he? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Charlton. Um, yeah. Again, I think he worked with Bert- Mark Bertram at QPR. Uh, but of course, we're also speaking in the same week that um, huge news for the club, which is the agreement by Lewisham Council to a extend the lease of the den to nine hundred ninety nine years, which is. Uh, takes us to the year 3023 when Neil and I will be long gone uh, and you too dear listeners um, but also more importantly permissions to redevelop the car park area and the the Lions uh, Centre and one other two other little plots of land so that's also big news and I'm wondering whether you know these two events um, come together in, in the same decision Neil because that's you know been seen for a long time the uh, redevelopment of the den has been seen for a long time as crucial to the future of, of the club. And I don't know. It, everything we're going to be saying here, listeners, is speculation because I, I, I don't think either of us claim to be particularly in the know here. But um, I can't believe that the two decisions aren't linked, that maybe Steve Kavanagh was not seen as the man to take the club forward into what is looking like a fairly ambitious period ahead, Neil. I think, I think you're right. I think they were probably... Yeah, they were probably linked. I think probably Steve had one job uh, recently, and that was to get the, the the renewal of the lease across the yeah. line. Uh, I think it's a fantastic thing for the future of the club. Safeguards our future. It means that uh, we're not moving to Kent, which I know. No. <laughs> no, would have been disaster, wouldn't it? Yeah, you know, um, yeah that's right. Yeah, we opinion. are a London club. Our roots are in East London, but we're kind of on loan to South East London, aren't we? Um, Permanent loan, yeah. Like the Elgin Marbles, listeners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the Elgin Marbles of football, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> we, we, di- we digress. <laughs> um, but... Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's... you know, it secures the future of the club. It it's another step in the right direction. I think, I think that on the whole, as we've been saying for the last eighteen months, two years, the club have been making baby steps in the right direction. Mm. Or, yeah, well, all mm. of the time, they, we're starting to get get the match day experience better. Yeah, well, it'd be even better if we could actually get to the ground. <laughs> that would be a help, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, that is linked in with, um, you know, there was the, the plans have, have evolved over time, listeners. I mean, some of the artists' impressions now are 
quite fantastical of super stadiums and tower blocks with beams gleaming off into the night. But one of the one of the um, things which has always struck me as a, a major help for us if it comes to pass is a, a defined station for the um, for the new Bermondsey development, as it would be called. But it's right by the den, having a, a stop off on the overground line, so you can literally walk out of the station and there's the football ground in front of you. So if that could come to pass as part of this project, whatever you want to call it. Um, that will be a massive step forwards. Um, you know, you see, you see rumours of expanding the den. We, one thing that I think has been to Steve Kavanagh's credit this season has been the vast improvement in marketing to fill the den. I mean, this has always been a, a joke, cliche thing that, that has done the rounds, Neil. But to consistently achieve seventeen thousand level tickets sold, sold um, however many are actually physically in the ground is unheard of since the old days you know we're talking pre-war day, uh post-war days so that's a major achievement um you know that is and whoever's put that scheme in place and whoever's been responsible for that scheme i think hmm. we need to congratulate them because 100 percent. yeah it's a yeah. game changer because we put what three four five thousand on our average crowd and yeah. And what we're talking about, one of our worst seasons for three quarters of it in yeah. quite a long time. You, you're talking, it probably would have been as bad as the days of when Pafitis left. Yeah, it was certainly, yeah. certainly heading that way. But the club that had. That sense the, of aimlessness, I agree. Yeah, but the club had the foresight and the balls, it's big balls. To make yeah. the change, yeah, you saw that Plymouth, who escaped relegation last weekend, waited too long and had to wait until the last day of the season. We made that change early, and my last appearance, I think, was actually uh, uh, I was somewhat against the appointment of Mr. Harrison. <laughs> but I'm happy to say it's wrong because whatever he's done, he's come in and. He, he, he's done a wondrous job. Now, and whether or not you think he should be in charge for next season's another thing, if he can replicate mm. it. But by Christ, he done. He, yeah, we really deserves a shot. I'll be honest. There's a wonderful, wonderful clip doing. A, probably, you know, listeners, you may have seen it on your WhatsApp. But um, it's it's lifted, I think, from Mill TV. It was uh, scenes inside the dressing room at the end of the uh, the final game of the season. Um, Swansea, wasn't it? We're in orange, and um, there's Neil Harris's speech to the, um, you know, to the squad. Um, a, a reply back from uh, Sean Hutchinson, um, thanking him, um, applause, and then the, the Tanganga um, 500 miles uh, thing that's become a become a, a theme. Really nice, really nice piece, and um, I think you're right. I mean, it, it took real courage by James Berylson. I think this is where, you know, um, this decision's come from, clearly. And I think the decision to, to uh, swap riders when uh, Joe Edwards was sacked back in October, uh, back in um, uh, February, sorry, um, where that's come from. So, you know, it, it does take real courage to do that. There's a lot of money at stake here, Neil. And to fall into League One... As Birmingham have now, I mean, I keep reading um, posts online by Birmingham fans saying they're going to stroll League One. Well, it's not an easy division to get out of once you fall into it. It's like a pit. I mean, Reading are struggling. Charlton have struggled for some years. And other teams before them, Pompey, have only just made a comeback after a long period in the wilderness. So to have fallen into the, into the third tier would have been disastrous. So I'm struck by the... Um, Shall we call it ruthlessness? We and I have sat before and spoken, Neil, about how Millwall historically lacked ruthlessness, the, the mark of a successful club. But I'm starting to wonder whether this is James Berylson's stamp. You know, um, he's prepared to take some big decisions at crucial moments, it seems. Yeah, yeah but that's not derived what JB did. JB made the decisions when he thought they were right. But mm. I, think that, I think that James has come in He's probably looking upon it with a younger set of eyes, uh, yeah. probably a more corporate set of eyes. And I think in the corporate world, if you're not up to the to the job, you're certainly at the door. And that's what's yeah. happened. I think that, uh, as you were saying, uh, last weekend, it was a scare. Last season was a scare. And it's mm. something 
can't go through again because I think the disparaging in money between the Championship and League One next season is almost as bad as it is between the Premier League and the Championship. Yeah. We couldn't afford to drop down. Uh, I think that Birmingham might get out of League One uh, yeah, well, at the first attempt, but I think it'll cost them an awful lot of money to get out of League I think you're right. I think you know, they will have to inject some cash and find the players to do it, but that's that's thankfully not our problem. Exactly. Um, so yeah, decisive, decisive so we decision. Afford, we could not afford to go down because we've made so many strides, and especially the average crowd, uh, the match day experience. Of course, there are million and one ways that that the club can improve and I think they will improve. I think it's a gradual process as they say Rome wasn't built in a night, was it? Or in a day. No, no, no. 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 And, uh, that's the way you've got to look upon this. I think for all of his faults, I think Steve Kavanagh was probably on the loser as soon as it emerged and he spoke about his love of West Ham. I think that <laughs> did him <laughs> I think that was like well he'd come from um he'd, he'd had a track record i think he'd worked at south end which has obviously got west ham overtones isn't it yeah. and also been to charlton fairly successful chief exec at both clubs in fairness to him I, I think um we were just saying off air before we started recording listeners it's not an easy job and you know it's, it's one of those jobs that isn't for everyone because you've got to be a multitude of um have a multitude of faces neil you've got to be a public face you've got to be a customer person if you like um he was an accountant which is a certain type of skill set you know anyone who's ever dealt with accountants will know exactly what i'm talking about um and you've got to be like a multi you, you'll be all things to all men in a sense and you've got to be good at all of them and not everyone is good at everything so i think one of the one of the things that i would say is it's that was no easy task and to be a chief exec of a club like Millwall, i know that we we love it so and um we laugh at its faults, but it must have been a difficult role at times. <laughs> yeah, we don't conform, do we? Yeah, you're constantly firefighting at Millwall, aren't you? Yeah, if something, absolutely. If something, if something goes wrong, it generally goes tits up in a big way. Doesn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, and well, it's magnified at our club, Neil. That's the thing. Yeah. I think you know you, right, we yeah. all we all follow the same sites. We all know what goes on in football generally, but what goes on in Plymouth is magnified 10 times when it goes on at the new den, just as one example, you know, I'm yeah, that particularly, but if something happens, you know what I mean? Yeah. If something happens, uh, at, at, at a lot of clubs, it's, uh, nothing much is made of it, but suddenly Millwall has red said, to go, yeah, well, the, you know, the coat peg that you can hang all ills on. Yeah. It's a byword for a certain type of um, stereotyped. Um, yeah, there's viewer. no amount of firefighting, however correct that. No. I guess. And I guess that he was always up against it. And given his West Ham connection, I think it was. <laughs> I think it was something that was going to be a bit too much for some people. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean. It he did lack customer skills. I think he was a bit blunt. And uh, I don't think you can be like that at Millwall. I think you've got to... You've got to... No, you've got to talk to people. You've got to talk to people. Yeah, skills. I think, yeah, it's no good. I, yeah. I think he panicked a couple of times, certainly over the booing of the knee. But then again, that was entirely new. I don't think anybody had to get done it. We were, Not, well, we were trained. You know what? I've often, I've often thought about that, <clears throat> and I've, I, I don't know about you, listeners out there, but I often think, well, what would I do in his in his position? Because it's one thing when you're online, Neil, or you know, even doing a, a show like this where you can express opinions, and there's no consequence to you or the business that you that you run. You know, we can say stuff on here within within the law, anyway, and you know, nothing really matters. I think when you're when you're a chief exec of a of a business and you have to deal with the likes of the EFL, the FA, and and the media and all all the various um, pressures that come in this in this world, and then somehow find a way through a, a, a situation. I, I mean, I, I'm asking a question. I don't have an answer. So I'm not sure what I would have done in his in his place. It's, I, I know, suppose I, in the end, I would have headed it off at the pass. 
I think it was obvious that it was going to happen. And it's knowing... I would agree with that. Yeah, I would head, yeah, I would agree with that. Base. It's knowing your customer base. What they should have done was they should have... Uh, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but I think I said it at the time. They should basically have done what they did after the event, before the event, yeah. and that was not draw attention to it. Uh, no. They just should have uh, held up the banner, the T-shirts, and said, look, yeah, no, this, this is what we're about. Bags. Yeah. So that's just head it off at the pass. That was, and I don't ever think he recovered from that. In, no, no, I agree. So, it was it was a tailspin at the time, yeah, wasn't it? In the eyes of Millwall fans, yeah. he never really recovered from that. I think he could have been forgiven for being West Ham and that if he'd have got that right. I think, but but then again. I think it it, it it was definitely pointed out online. I, I did have mm. a look at Hoff earlier on, and I forget who said it. But mm. uh, but with Steve Kavanagh, it's better the devil you know than you don't know. There are plenty of worse chief executives out there. And uh, well, this is this is a truth as well, Neil. This is a very very true point. And, I mean, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the kind of um, upheaval that the booing caused, I mean, you're right. I mean, it, it was it was highly predictable. I think that's probably the the major area that I would criticise, and I, I don't like criticising people for um, things that um, erupt out of nowhere, but it didn't quite erupt out of nowhere. It came with a bit of a slow-motion um, intro, so I think there's th- th- that would be the thing I'd say there. And you're right about um, in the aftermath of that, I don't think... Um, you know, but um, but then whatever you do in those circumstances is going to be open to criticism. So I think to some extent it's it's not an easy job. And I, I I would say that to everybody listening. And I you know, I've banged on about bird shit. You know, and <laughs> small trivial things like that, which is not trivial in some ways. But you know, it's you you're, you are dealing with on the one hand someone some Herbert banging on about pigeon shitting on his seat, and then you're dealing with the FA over some major. Um, incident or some of some sort so you know it's a job that requires you to lurch from situation to situation and and come out um hopefully on the winning side each time not an easy one and you're right i make you right about we don't know the, the next devil that comes along because you know some decisions are just inherent to being a football ceo nowadays so you might not necessarily um like the new guy any more than the old guy but we'll see we haven't got any news on who that person might be. I, I we haven't made... he skillfully negotiated a few things. He skillfully negotiated all of the stuff to do with the lease. Mm. I think he was well on his way to sorting out the training ground but for, for uh, West Kingsdown, but whatever <clears throat> happened there... Mm. I wonder if that's well. Been... I've, I've taken that to be money. Money, money. The money supply is not being quite there to pay for this. It's quite a big, big um, project that we've got planned down, haven't we, down at Kingsdown? And um, I've taken it that with um, the uncertainty of uh, the season and the possibility of falling into the third tier, and maybe the, the money. I mean, we've had this issue with Husky Chocolate. I don't know. That seems to have gone quite, and it would do because. There's talk of legal proceedings, so you don't give a running commentary when you have a you know a case going. Um, but who knows? I, I've taken that to be a, a, a problem of, of cash, to be honest. I mean, I would have thought the council down would be sympathetic to the kinds of things we want to bring into the area down there. But I, I Yeah, long if that's now on the back burner. I wonder if that's Maybe. probably the reason. I think it, it, yeah, well, they might have put that on the back burner, so that might be another reason why now was seen as the right time but then again that's a lot easier to negotiate or to navigate your way through than the yeah, league yeah it's been a difficult thing for a new chief executive to come in and suddenly have to start dealing with council officials and things like that people that you have no relationship with because because well, be, yeah, well, let's face it, all of these decisions are all about relationships, aren't they? And building relationships. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other name that's obviously um, was announced today, Steve Cavanaugh. We've we've probably covered as much as we can do, Neil. But the other name, obviously, was Alex Aldridge, another person that 
um, divides opinion, um, has come into the job of director. I think he's been there for a couple of years now. Was he? He was there last season, wasn't he? But he's been there for long enough now to he's bear been the a probably. Lot isn't he? He, 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 he he was there before wasn't he and yep and then he went to stoke and then he came back he replaced harvey bustle wasn't it was it harvey, harvey bustle yeah it always reminds me of the come dancing judge it was darcy bustle wasn't it? um so yeah i mean he's also a casualty today um probably i'm gonna guess neil the failures of recruitment most notably the debacle that turned out to be Joe Edwards. And I think that sports is a, an American sports, particularly is a ruthless business. And I think that Jimmy Berylson comes from that kind of culture that you, you, you hire and fire according to success or failure. And um, personally, I think that Alex might well be paying the price for the, for the whole Joe Edwards uh, mischief. Yes. Uh, if, if sources are to be believed and you get to hear things, he was mm. chiefly responsible for talking uh, the club into uh, 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 appointing Joe Edwards. Yeah. It, it, it's a really difficult one, Joe Edwards, because he's going to polarise opinion like everything down at Millwall. Yeah. I still maintain I think he will make a good manager somewhere. But it just wasn't to be with us. I, I don't think he was prepared for the dressing room and the power of the dressing room, which makes Harris's <laughs> achievement even more spectacular, really, doesn't it? Because he's come in with absolutely it does. Players, yeah, and has completely turned around. But I think you're right. I think that the problem I think Alex has got is people remember him as the 15-year-old, 14, 15-year-old, working <laughs> on the South London We well, set the news at Den up as a, as a kind of yeah. a, um, a news... It was a, it was a, it is a good website. Yeah. It's been acquired by the Southern News now, but it was a good website, Neil. But, yeah, yeah you're right. You know, but I think he's got that image problem that you start off doing that, then you move on to... Or, yeah, we start off doing stuff for the South London press. I can remember him mithering me because he was trying to get his uh, football league uh, media accreditation. Hmm. Um, uh, he was really worried about it. Nice lad, nice bloke. He's um, a good boy. Yeah, yeah, he and, is. Uh, then, he's got, then he's formed the news at Den, which was brilliant. He was, hmm. uh, he was using he's his inside knowledge and it was suddenly yeah. revolutionary. We were starting to get news from the club, which I think... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was... It was, it broke new ground. There was nothing like it. I mean, the the, the, the websites like um, Misa, or Misa, however you pronounce it, and then the, the House of Fun were rumour, and there's humour and all, but it wasn't quite the same thing. It didn't have the the, the journalistic tone that the news at Den aspired to. So when it first began, it's now part of the Southwark News' um, umbrella, but it was it was quite groundbreaking in Millwall terms, Neil. I thought you know it was it was quite an achievement for him at such yeah. a young age. Yeah, and then he went on to the Southwark News, and I don't think you can ever recover at a club from Millwall like that. Yeah, but yeah, it was like we're going back to the Kavanagh situation with the knee. Yeah, uh, yeah. Journalists aren't very well liked down at the Den. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that point. So I don't what, know. I don't know how you do it, mate. I don't know how you do. It. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, but don't advertise the fact on Hoff what I do for a living. <laughs> I mean, you you you're one criticism away from being um, cast out into the into the wilderness. I mean, um, I, I I take my hat off to my mate Aaron because you know he works for the BBC. Obviously, he's there to cover a game and, and events as a neutral. He, that's, he's professional. He's got to do it, but. He clearly has a soft spot for us, but um, it's a very tough line to walk, isn't it, between your journalistic integrity, shall I, if I can use that phrase, and following the club that you love. It's it's a tough it's a tough line to to, to follow. Yeah, well, it's probably the one good reason why I'm happy that I'm now a full time rugby union writer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that problem <laughs> uh, because because with Millwall, it's always something I've never had. Very good contacts at Millwall. Occasionally, you hear stuff and, uh, hmm. and whatever else, but it, it was something you don't want to you don't want to mess where you sleep. No. Kind of thing. It, 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 no, no. 
I it's think sad. the late Paul Jiggins had, a, had had went through some turmoil at times. He, he was a Sun journalist, uh, listeners. I've sadly passed away now, but um, he used to get some get some grief on 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 the Hoff. I seem to remember because you know, yes, you can be a Millwall fan, but you're expected to back the club. Right? Whereas as a journalist, you got to tell it like it is. It's it's the it's the essence of the job. If you're not doing that, you're not do, you're not going to do very well. So. It's a, it's a tough it's a tough line to walk. I, I do agree that he's probably carried the um the baggage of that that um you know period into into his role as a director of football. Um, yeah, I think it, yeah, I think in terms of his recruitment, I think our recruitment has got better. Uh, obviously, he, you're not going to get it a hundred percent correct. Uh, no, unless you unless you're using expensive algorithms in search of F- football manager he was the, the standard i mean that that i wonder yeah. sometimes whether these these jibes land and don't you know it's it's, it's, a, it's a sometimes i do wonder whether we all do we all do this human nature you, you know you make that you can make a jibe and it sticks somehow and the football manager thing never quite fell off with alex did it yeah no that's right but but you look at our recruitment on the whole yeah, fairly decent over the last well, two, three yeah. years. In fantastic terms of personnel, fantastic yeah. player, uh, yeah. Zian Fleming, fantastic yeah. player. I don't know. Yeah, well, obviously, agents offer players initially, yeah. and things like that, and you don't know how long they've been targets for the club. Uh, you look at a Marco. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. He looks like he's got potential. You know. He's certainly not a dud, anyway. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, well, that's right. And yeah, well, okay, you have got duds. You've got Alan Campbell, but then again, you'd have looked at him and you'd have thought he's always done okay. But yeah. for some reason, it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't happen. It, it's a bit like the lad up front that we had at the end of the season. N- Nis- Nisbet. Yeah. Yeah, Robert Femi. I was thinking. Yeah, was it Robert Femi? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. It, he didn't kind of fit into the Harris way of doing things. I think he arrived unfit and never really looked fit to me. I know that he ran around a little bit and he was a bit... A couple of, of good finishes, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting that he, he went without fanfare, really, didn't he? And, um, so recruitment that's interesting. is hit and miss. Recruitment is mm. hit and miss. Nisbet, I think, will come good. I hope he comes good. I want him to come good. Mm, I do. From a... From a Hearts fan that I used to work with on Fleet Street, loved him, thought he was great, and said we've got a fifteen twenty million pound player on our hands. Yeah, but yeah, quite pity yet. But hopefully Harris might be the man to get it out of him. Uh, well, I was just a- going to come on before before we finish onto the Neil Harris question. Obviously. Well, you've said it. I can't add to it. It's a huge achievement. That he's, he, I mean, not quite a miracle. It's not quite in the George Graham miracle scene of of the, of the eighties, but it's I'll it's in the conversation what? for great seasons. Neil, I tell you that, mate. It is not far off because no. I'm very much of a school of. I don't think we'll get relegated until we're relegated. Until there are until there's a team above us. Hmm. Uh, that we can't catch and we're third bottom. But it was looking ominous, wasn't it? It was looking... It looked really bleak, that 2-0 loss to Sheffield Wednesday. That was the last day of Joe, wasn't it? Um, I must admit, I I, I felt pretty depressed coming home from the den that day. Um, Everybody had been spanking them. mm. (laughs) We ought to have spanked them if we... Yeah, in we, look, we look so far off of it. That was the thing. Yeah. So, so the achievement is huge. I mean, my my um, mind just wonders where these changes leave Neil Harris. Um, he's made a point, interestingly, since he's come back to us, Neil, of saying he's here for this the contract, which was eighteen months. So this year and then, then next season. Um, whether that's how that's going to work out, now is going to be the next interesting question to be answered by the club because contractually he's here but um, given that uh, we've got these changes at the uh, senior level in the club where does it leave Neil Harris it's going to be another another um, maybe another another dramatic day is, is, is coming who knows but um, it's, it's, a, it's an open question at the moment isn't it well 
maybe for some, I think it would be, I think it would be incredibly harsh to mm. dispense with his services now. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I think he's in, Never, he's earned a shot. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely earned a shot at next season. Then again, if he was to walk away, he walked away last time with his yeah. reputation in tatters. He would now walk away totally the opposite. Yeah, his he, reputation glowing, he, absolutely glowing. He, uh, yeah. His sainthood, his beautification towards sainthood yeah. from the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> 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 Maybe get old father was his face to, uh, to yeah. sort that out. Well, but no, father beam, beam from where he's I think he he's he he's won the chance to to lead us next season. Uh, we've got to make changes. The one fatal mistake that we're going to make, and I hope we don't make it, is we cannot keep hold of the likes of Sean Hutchinson. We have to make a, quite a lot of changes, and I'm wondering. I know that he went to uh, he went to Peterborough and Oxford on the way back from Swansea last week. I think he said. Yeah, he said so, didn't he? Yeah, he's stopping off at uh, Oxford. Yeah. I think he's definitely planning. I think this. I think these changes have probably been in place for weeks if not months as soon as the season's over certainly since we were safe i think that 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 the final decisions would have been made and we'll make them and we'll announce them at the end of the season i think given given everything i think if we were going to make a change we'd have probably have announced it today but yeah. He definitely deserves a crack at next season. He needs the resources. He needs to be back with the resources now. We've got to make substantial changes to that side. We're going to have to make substantial changes because, obviously, our loan players will go back. I don't buy into the fancifulness that we're going to sign Jeff at Tendanga because we're... Yeah, we're not going to be able to afford his agent. Well, not unless there's a new stream of money coming in. I mean, that, that, that this, you're right. Fantasy is the is the right word for it, because unless or until we see that, then you just we have to live within cut the cloth within our within our means, as the saying goes. And Tanganga has proven to be a top quality defender outside our price range. I think so. Um, um, absolutely. We'll wait and see. Yeah, well, for a guy that wasn't fit when he arrived, and you thought, oh. God almighty, oh God, what have you done here? You've signed us another dud. <laughs> uh, but, but then under Neil Harris, it kind of clicked into place. I know he showed glimpses of it under Joe Edwards. Yeah, didn't he? Yeah. But yeah, he did. He was, badly, he was badly lacking fitness when he first arrived. I think he'd probably be the first person to admit that. But he's developed that. He's, I mean, he's looking really strong in the, in the most recent performances. Um, I think he would have to. It's a shame. Go. Shame he got that red card in, at uh, Swansea, but there we are. I think that was just poor refereeing. Right. As yeah, much but that as was anything. a real war way of going out on things, grabbing something. Yeah, it reminded me of Terry Terry Herlock. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> you, you look at the, you, you look at it in the grand scheme of things. <sighs> One of my favourite loan signings, and I think probably one of the best loan signings we had, was Darren Huckabee. And oh yeah, I, going back to the uh, yeah, yeah the late nineties, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that Tendanga will deserves to be mentioned in that kind of breath, if not high. Yeah. I think a tremendous acquisition for the club, exactly what we needed, and I think we need to look at. The way we finished the season and the way we played and the players we used, and we've got to try and get budget versions in. It's no good relying on your mothers and uh, your short- no, no, you're, you're kind of journeyman, the journeyman utility men, or whatever yeah, term we you want to give them. Get away from that. We we need to kick them out, if you like. No, absolutely, uh, absolutely. And absolutely. we need to find a way of getting Ryan Longman in. <laughs> Well, on a permanent. Well, he's, there's a player that's improved since Neil Harris's uh, returns, yeah. as as with so many other aspects of the club. Neil, um, it's going to be an interesting. How many times have I said that? Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to charge a fiver to myself every time 
I say it's going to be an interesting summer time, what I seem to say. But um, today's big news, breaking news, if you like, uh, the departure of Alex Aldrich and, and Chief Exec Steve Cavanaugh raises probably as many questions <laughs> as we've been able to answer today, Neil, but we wait and see with interest what happens next. Yeah, uh, yeah. what can happen next? Yeah, well, we've already had a new ground, or yeah, well, yeah, well, we've already... Football, yeah, yeah, development news, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've already had the development news, the extension of the... Yeah, with the lease. I'm just having a look on the website now just to make sure they haven't sneaked something in on us. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Recording this. <laughs> you, you just wonder if Lionel Messi signed for us on a... <laughs> yeah, free transfer. Well, the, the, big news, the big news is Ryan Leonard's on Wall Talk podcast, so you can have a listen to that, listeners. Um... Yeah, or Killian Mbappe decided that he... <laughs> He fancies us running firm and see. <laughs> he wants to, to uh, fulfil a lifelong dream of living, working in Burton. Turn out for the Lions. <laughs> it's everyone's dream. Everyone's dream. Well, we wait and see. We wait and see. Now, I think that's that's um, that's certainly enough drama for one day. I, I'm going to leave my microphone out now, Mrs. Hart. I'm going to have to dust around it, listeners. You have to dust around it, and um, we'll see what other news crops up. Neil, it's been. Good to talk to you again, mate. Welcome back to the show after a little so sojourn away. Yeah, I don't know why I was out of favour. Oh. No, I don't know why you. We weren't out of favour. <laughs> <laughs> I got you then and then, didn't I? <laughs> you only had to call your woke to complete the bingo card. That's <laughs> all that's left, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear, listeners, there we are. Um, big, big thank you, Neil Fisler. Um, as any other news crops up, I dare say we'll be back as this dramatic summertime unfolds at the Den. Until the next edition of uh, Actung Millwall from from Neil Harris, Neil Harris, <laughs> Neil Fisler. <laughs> That'd be a coup if I get him on here. I'll put a few podcasts <laughs> on the back foot, wouldn't it, if I got him on here. Uh, from Neil Fisler and myself, Arriva Dirty Millwall. Bye for now. <laughs>